I'm going to start and end uh, in quite a dark place, but bear with me. I promise there'll be some sunshine and hopefully some hope as well. Two years ago, a light was shone onto the atrocious conditions that exist in some Indonesian fishing boats. Sepri, a 25-year-old man, his body limp, wrapped in cloth, lifeless, was carelessly cast into the Pacific Ocean. It was unethical work conditions that killed him, along with two other people on the boat with him, before the crew was rescued. You see, Sepri had never been to sea before. He departed with 22 other fishermen, and he never returned. That's what globalization has done. We have completely lost connection with our food and with the people who produce it. My talk today is radical transparency. My question is, can it be an antidote to modern slavery? Now, I don't know about you, it doesn't really matter what that fish cost, there's no way that I'd want to eat fish that had come from that boat. And when I say uh, radical transparency, what I mean is complete openness, end to end, about the journey that that food took. Let me take you back to the beginning of time. Since the first spark, technology has changed the way that we do life. Almost through the entirety of human history, producers and consumers met at the farm gate, they met in the local farmer's market, they interacted, formed relationship, shook hands, and they breathed the same air. By not breathing the same air, we have lost our connection with the people who produce our food and therefore our food. Now don't get me wrong, globalization is wonderful. The technology that led to globalization has completely changed the way that we live. What it's done is it's made the world a much smaller place. We live in a global village. It's created scaled economic outcomes. It's reduced hunger and famine. And we've seen significant improvements in food security. And all of this has happened while population growth has just been skyrocketing. For us in Nelson, this is the beautiful Nelson market. We can purchase Nelson tomatoes in the summer when they're in season. And in the winter, we can consume tomatoes that have been imported. It means on the global stage, we can showcase our wonderful beef and lamb. We can create innovative hop products and they used overseas to make this amazing beer that we all can enjoy. And we can showcase our amazing Marlborough wine in some of the finest restaurants around the world. What it means for uh, developing countries is they can benefit from the capital, uh, from the technology and experience of developed countries. And developed countries can benefit from the human resources and environmental resources of developed countries. But it's not all sunshine, lollipops, and high fives. What we've created is a really complex system, incredibly sophisticated, unnecessarily so, sometimes intentionally so. There's a story I, I think that's quite salient um, because of what's going on right now around the world, but. In the Ukraine, right now, uh, there's continued conflict. And as a result, uh, it's really difficult for them to export their grain to market. What this has led to is it's led to the risk of famine, famine and increased costs because the grain is used in so many different products around the world. You see, we've put all our eggs in one basket. Globalization has led to unequitable profit distribution. 
and mostly that's to the negative uh, benefit of the, of the uh, producer. As consumers, it's really hard to know what's authentic. It's hard to trust what's written on uh, packaging or brands. It's hard to even validate the truth. There's barely any accountability. And when regulators try to place, put that accountability in place, it's incredibly difficult to do so. You want to know something completely bananas? This product here up on the screen, this is branded as Alaskan cod. But yet, it's also a product of China. How is that possible? You see, the fish is caught in US waters, landed in the US, shipped to China, processed, packaged, and then shipped back to Western supermarkets for sale, sometimes kilometers from where it was caught. Is that acceptable? As consumers, are we happy with that? Keep in mind that food miles really count now when we're trying to reduce to net zero. Closer to home, uh, one of New Zealand's largest uh, supermarkets removed 80% of the product uh, from one of New Zealand's largest fishing companies off the shelf, and they replaced it with imported product. New Zealand is one of the most significant fishing nations in the world. How is it acceptable to us as consumers for that to happen? If it can happen uh, to the largest and most established brands, how much more so can it happen to boutique producers? You see, it all comes down to you don't know the story of your food. A recent International Food Council report stated that 80% of consumers have had conflicting information about their food. And of those people, two-thirds uh, had it caused them to doubt their choices. When we are naive, we don't know what we don't know. Without this type of radical transparency applied in our supply chains, people will not care. People will trust what they're being told. We need this, and people want it. We need this so we can ensure that our planet, our communities, our environment, people, and animals are secure for the future. People more and more are demanding relationship like their ancestors had. This is Carl. He's an inshore fisherman. He installed a camera in his boat, and he broadcast that footage to the internet 24-7. Spectacular. He was completely transparent about what happened. In this case, he's catching a shark, and he's releasing it back into the ocean safely. It's a little bit dangerous. Radical transparency is a no-brainer. There's a, a recent study that stated that if the fishing industry spent 1% of its revenue on traceability and transparency information technology, that they could see a 60% increase in profit through the creation of premium product. For producers, radical transparency helps build relationship. I was on the back of Carl's boat the first time we went out to sea. My investor was there beside him from Chicago. He was taking phone calls of people ordering the food that he had caught 10 minutes before pulling it on board. Relationships are key when building brand. More and more marketplaces now are demanding better information about how their food travels through the supply chain. We are witnessing a fundamental shift. Technology can shine a light in dark places. What we have to do as a global community is we need to localize globalization. What that means is buying products close to us, avoiding putting all our eggs in one basket. This leads to more innovation, it spreads risk. And I'm calling this a kind of a globalization version 2.0. Technology underpins this transformation. 
Knowledge is power. And by putting knowledge in the consumer's hands, we make them powerful. It changes the game. This is an example of a camera installed on a fishing boat. This is Carl's boat. You can see the camera in the center of the image. Cameras are being installed on, on um, thousands and thousands of fishing boats around the world. It's beneficial because it replaces the need to take onboard human observers on the boat, which are really expensive. It allows governments the type of information they've never had before to make better decisions. And when used properly, it can connect consumer and producer together. Tracking systems and electronic logbooks are being stored on boats all around the world. <clears throat> and it's exciting because what that does is it allows regulators real-time information to know literally where every single boat is and what's on board all of the time. Similar things are happening in the meat production area. I believe that soon you'll be able to understand that the steak that you're eating came from a certain animal on a certain farm. Forming those connections is vital. You see, technology tweaks paths that globalization has formed, shaping how we live tomorrow. So let me take you back. It doesn't have to be like this. This is a screen grab from a video that was taken um, of the last moments that Sepri had on board that boat, wrapped in cloth, about to be tossed into the ocean. It should be confronting. This is not like a, a nice hook to plate story. This is real lives. This is a guy who should have been able to go out and earn a living and then come home safe to his family. You see, what was not possible before is now possible. This technology exists. It's here. And there are many, many people committed to telling you the story of your food better. Now, you might come out of this type of talk and you might say, you might feel helpless. You might say, what can I do? It's really simple. Buy local where possible. And there's a, a question that I want you to ask your fishmonger. Instead of asking, how fresh is this fish? You might ask, who caught this fish? Where did this fish come from? And when was it caught? Our vote does count as consumers. It's really important that we read uh, the, the labels on the packages that we purchase. Remember, food always tells a story, and the story really matters. Thanks very much. Thank you.